Every month, Game Ranks gets together some of the best games we've seen on mobile throughout the month. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, the 10 best free iOS and Android games of March 2020. Starting off at number 10 is War Tortoise 2. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with the first War Tortoise. It's kind of strange because it's kind of an idle game, kind of a shooter, and it doesn't look like either of those things, really. I mean, there is obviously shooting. You play as a pilot of a war tortoise, which is, by the way, a very large turtle decked out like a tank. The idea is you go around, you take part in fights, you get loot, you upgrade your tortoise, and it gradually gets more and more insane. They label the game an idle shooter, claiming a mix of exploration, idle and incremental shooter gameplay with loads of customization. And I think that's a fairly accurate description, although it doesn't really sink in until you play it exactly what it is. And it's actually quite satisfying. If you haven't played the first War Tortoise, it's not a big deal. I would definitely recommend War Tortoise 2, which is out on both iOS and Android now. And number nine is Naruto x Boruto Ninja Tribes, which when you come down to it is ultimately a turn-based battler slash hero collector gotcha style game. But it's a really good example of one. There is a little bit of grindiness to it, but not so much that I would call it bad because you also get the ability to skip missions that you've already completed and still get rewards for them. So in truth, the battle system works really fun. It's not super complicated, it's pretty basic, but it's one that's fun. And most of the surrounding stuff in this game, the loot, the come back in two hours and you get a reward things, actually work out to be not too far apart, but not too close together, to where you're actually kind of interested in coming back. That's always a good thing in this kind of a game. It's really actually usually the more contentious stuff because a lot of these games actually are a lot of fun as far as the actual gameplay. And this isn't really an exception. I enjoy the battle system, but I also think that the surrounding stuff is somewhere between tolerable and enjoyable. Naruto x Boruto is out on iOS and Android now. At number eight is Gwent. Now let me just go ahead and express how happy I am Gwent, the Witcher card game, is out on mobile. Now, I like Gwent on the computer because I like Gwent a lot. Gwent is a very fun card game that is not too difficult to grasp the rules of upon going through tutorials, and it is incredibly fun. However, I play card games on my phone. I don't play them on the computer. Up until this point, Gwent has been the only card game I have played on the computer. And that's because it's a very good card game that I very much enjoy, both aesthetically and the rules of. But now it's on mobile, and I'm stoked. Truly, the amount of time I'm going to waste playing this game is going to be astounding. It's Gwent. It's exactly what it should be. It is not a limited version. There are a couple of minor differences. It's a little more streamlined, but it's not so much that you're going to feel as if it is a limited version of Gwent. Honestly, I have no idea why this hasn't come out sooner, but it is out on iOS and Android now. And number seven is Bomber Grounds Battle Royale. Let's just go ahead and say that this game is exactly what it sounds like. When it says Bomber Grounds, it is intentionally evoking the memory of Bomberman. And this game plays a lot like Bomberman, if Bomberman was a battle royale. So you're on the grid, you're using bombs, there's a couple of additional moves, but obviously the point is to be the last one standing. And let me tell you, what it does as a Bomberman battle royale is perfect. If I were the owners of the Bomberman IP, I would just hire these people to make this game again with Bomberman and make a ton of money off of whatever it is monetization they threw into it. Gigantic Duck Games has an absolute winner here. Like the controls are super simplistic. You're not gonna get confused. Everything you know about both Bomberman and Battle Royale applies and it's super fun. Seriously, if any aspect about this sounds fun, you should try it. And number six is Motorsport Manager Online, which as its name implies, takes Motorsport Manager and makes it into an online game. This is of course a management sim. It's perhaps one of the more competent ones out there too, with very nice graphics, a really good interface, a setup that's never confusing, and a great deal of customization. There's tons of different modes, including career. You build a team, you build your cars. The intent is obviously to create the ultimate team and put it up against other people online in 10 player races. And the races themselves are exhilarating. You can zoom in and out, you can see the action up close, you can see it far away, but it's really neat because obviously as a management game, the point is little changes 
in every single run because of something you did in tinkering with your car or any number of small little adjustments you can make. Motorsport Manager Online does it all and does it very satisfyingly. It's out on iOS and Android right now. At number five is Battle Racing Stars, a really good take on a race slash endless runnery type battle game. Honestly, I have a hell of a fun time with this thing. It's very simple. If you've played an endless runner, you basically know how to play it already. Very simple tap controls. Essentially what you're doing is attempting to race and also battle, clearly it's in the name, using the terrain, the obstacles, and various power-ups to your advantage. You can probably see from the footage that it's nice and frenetic, but I think you'll find that you're not going to be confused by it. The characters differentiate themselves well, visually speaking, and the problems you might expect this type of game to have generally don't seem like a big issue. If you've ever played the game Road Warriors with the chicken icon, I don't think it's still available anymore, but it's kind of like that without the cars, and it's a little more platformy, and it's also got a lot of a Capcom look and feel to it. Battle Racing Stars is one I think you definitely gotta give a shot. It's out on iOS and Android now. And number four is Bullet League, which is a 32-player PvP 2D shooter. I mean, this is a really slick game. It's got a very unique art style that keeps it simple while managed to be quite stylish and also easy on the eyes. Again, this type of a game isn't good if you can't tell what's going on, and you can easily tell what's going on. You're never really lost. This game is paced really well. It's not breakneck, but it is pretty quick and things can develop incredibly fast, but this game does a very good job of taking the concept of a 2D battle royale seriously, and doesn't stick you with too much nonsense on the peripheral. It is a free to play game. There are certain realities we have come to accept, but I don't think it ever treads into the too far area. It's pretty kind with it. There are certainly much worse examples, and the gameplay itself is so fun, I think that it's pretty acceptable. Controls are simple as well, basically what you would expect with a platform shooter that has the ability to aim up and down. I'd say at least download it and try it, if any of this sounds enjoyable to you, because I've found that it does all of this stuff very well. Bullet League is out on iOS and Android now. And number three is Team Fight Tactics, a PvP strategy auto battler, actually from Riot Games themselves. Team Fight Tactics is basically another auto chess game. Now, does that mean it's exactly the same as Dota Underlords or auto chess itself? No. The PC version was out last year. It's finally made its way to mobile. It's an eight player free for all auto chess battle, and there are a number of League of Legends champions in it. Teamfight Tactics adds a couple of things such as the carousel rounds, where you're on a literal actual carousel and you're in a battle with eight other players. It can result in some bigger boosts to your stats, but of course there's also the tried and true auto chess stuff. This is kind of the genre leader as far as that goes. And they do a lot to change things from season to season. At least they have on PC. There's no reason to expect that they wouldn't on mobile. It seems in no way a fundamentally different game than the PC version. And if you're into auto chess, you will enjoy Team Fight Tactics, I believe. It's out on iOS and Android now. At number two is Sky Children of the Light, which comes to us from that game company, the creators of Journey, Flower, etc. Gonna go ahead and say Journey is one of my favorite games of all time. It is a beautiful, incredible adventure that just does so much with so little. Sky Children of the Light is very much a descendant of Journey, albeit with a bunch of new realms and a lot more social capability. For instance, you can customize your character, you can express yourself. I mean, there was social stuff in Journey, but it was very limited, intuitively so as a matter of fact. However, Sky does a good job of sort of upgrading it, moving forward with some of the ideas. If you like Journey, it's probably going to be something that you'll like. Is it Journey 2? Not necessarily, but it really builds on a lot of Journey's ideas. Sky Children of the Light is now currently out on iOS. You can pre-register for the Android version. It will be coming very soon. And finally at number one is the Seven Deadly Sins Grand Cross. This is of course a cinematic anime adaption that brings us turn-based JRPG style battles. And in all honesty, feels very much like it could easily be a much bigger paid release. And in all honesty, you could easily get swept up playing this game for tens of hours. It looks gorgeous. I mean, 
you could release this as a console game. And I don't know that people would genuinely complain. It's got such an anime style to it, obviously, that it doesn't necessarily need the power. I'm not going to say that I'm super into the anime or anything, but the game itself I've really been enjoying. And I have to imagine that fans of the anime enjoy this a lot because without really having a lot of context, I'm easily getting into it. The Seven Deadly Sins Grand Cross is out on iOS and Android now. To say the very least, this game delivers. And a quick bonus game for you tonight, Castlevania Symphony of the Night is now out for $3. Now we've obviously stopped doing the paid iOS and Android videos, a lot less of them come out, but when one that's worthwhile comes out, we definitely mention it in the bonus. And Castlevania Symphony of the Night is like one of the ultimate games, period. To have it out for $3, if you like Castlevania, Metroidvanias, any of that kind of stuff, side-scrolling, action platforming, get it! There's no reason not to, it's such a good game. And that's it for this month. What did you think? Have you played any of these games? Are you gonna? Leave us a comment. Let us know. If you like this video, please click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe, and don't forget to enable all notifications. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.